joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild, Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the church that evermore lifted holy hands above, offering up on every shore her pure sacrifice of love. Lord of all, to Thee.
good morning, church. Don't nobody like you guys? I mean, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I know, Mike, you're a special guy, and there's a lot of people, you know, you're so powerful, you, you know, the charisma just overwhelms, but, you know, it just scares them over on this side. So, exactly. It's all right. It's good. Stretch your arms out. There you go. And I want to uh, say hello to everybody who are watching online. My name is Jeff Jones. I'm a lay speaker. Um, I'm filling in for my <coughs> wife, um, Pastor Suzanne Jones. Um, she is away on a women's retreat weekend, and she's actually she's driving as we speak as she's on her way home uh, from Deep Creek Lake. So uh, we give everyone safe travels as, as they return. Um, here's some cool news. I've got to get this out on part of the uh, announce, for announcement. Starting this week, I am taking a class through the United Methodist on called From the Pew to the Pulpit. For those who are called to become lay speakers or pastors and all that. So I think after 80 services that I've done, I think I'm long overdue. And maybe I might learn something, you know, for the services I've been providing in the past. Um, with that being said, is there any, uh, any announcements that we need to, need to bring up? None? All good. Beautiful day outside. Yes. Yes, Lori. Something else was going on this. Uh, gospel, open my. And also, I want to make it um, on um, April 26th. Um, we're actually having open mic night here at the Fellowship Hall. Um, and that's going to begin at 6 p.m. So, all those are welcome to join in and open mic night. So, maybe, uh, maybe I'll do my stand up comedian act, huh? <laughs> so, uh, where people will pay for me to sit down and be quiet. So, <laughs> so um, any other announcements that uh, needs to be shared? None? With that being said, let's come together for our call to worship. How shall we live when lavished with love? We are God's children, but has not been revealed what our return become in the future. Just as in our origins, our future is tied to our planet. Creator has given us partners for mutual flourishing. Mountains, Mountains and valleys, receive your love and echo with praise. Our salvation is bound together with creations. Amen. Our opening hymn is Christ for the World We Sing in our United Methodist hymnal number four, oh, sorry, 568. Thank you.
the first verse, but there was a wasp flying around my head. <laughs> I was like... It's okay. <laughs> wow. As long as it didn't make a mess. <laughs> he would have. <laughs> Wouldn't happen if that was Clayton. There's not much up there for the wasp to go to. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Goodness. Well... For her concern, we could put aside, but what, what other joys and concerns would we like to lift up today? Well, oh, come on. Day. What? What? Such a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Yeah. Yes. The men are heads in the mountains. Amen. Yes. Amen. And uh, that being said, um, my, uh, my sister and my brother-in-law, uh, Carol and Donnie Lidden, are not here with us today, but they're watching online. And it is so awesome. This week, Donnie is going up on the men's walk this week, so we want to keep Donnie in our prayers. So also, anything else in joys and concerns? Yes? Just continue uh, prayers for my brother-in-law, Frank, who's recovering from bypass surgery. What's his first name? Frank. Frank? Okay. Yes. And I was on a bus trip to New York City, and I'm really kind of nervous about that because she's been sheltered her whole life. And <laughs> my parents thought I was sheltered, <laughs> so you might be surprised. Yeah, but there's a big difference between you and I. <laughs> 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 I know. <laughs> well, that includes. So cool. Exactly. We'll pray for all those who are traveling this weekend. Um, any other uh, prayers or joys? Yes, Lori. I just um, like to thank everybody for their prayers for my mom's cousin Lonnie. Lonnie? Lonnie Jones, who's been in our bulletin. She did um, lose her fight here with cancer. I wonder how much she gained her eternal life in heaven on Friday morning. So it's bittersweet. Prayers for her family and her daughters. But thank you for continuing Christmas. She's good. She's watching on She's good. It's bittersweet. Yeah. yeah. Um, Christian asked for prayers for the people in Israel. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, in the Middle East. Yeah. Yes. Any other? Well, if not, let's come in together with an attitude of prayer. Gracious Father, we are gathered here today to celebrate this wonderful, beautiful day. The sun is bright, the grass is growing. Unfortunately, some of us, like myself, is going to cut grass this afternoon. But I am grateful, Father, that you are among us and given us this wonderful day. Father, we like to lift up Donnie Lydon as he's going to take on a venture to go away for three and a half days to Marlou Ridge as he attends his first experience of a men's weekend retreat on the West Virginia Emmaus weekend. Father, we like to lift up Brother Frank, who's recovering, and we also like to lift up Blondie's family as Blondie is no longer with us and she's in your arms, Father. She no longer suffers pain, but she's in that, the best chapter of her life. And someday, one day, we all will be in your arms. Father, we like to lift up all those who are traveling, like Pastor Suzanne Jones, who's coming home. But we also like to lift up Annika as she's part of a bus trip to New York City. For all those who are on that bus, may their trip be a wonderful experience and may they return home safely. Father, we like to lift up the Middle East, especially Israel, as we know that there's war, conflict, and division amongst Father, we ask you to bring peace to all the nation's leader that would come together to come to grips because bombs are not the answer. Killing people are not the answer. This is not what God intends us to behave. People bring evil. God does not bring evil. And this must end. Father, we like to lift up all our military for all those who serve our country around the world and here at home. What they do does not go unrecognized. And Father, I also like to lift up those who serve in the fire department and the police department for those that serve and protect and help us in our lives when we need them the most. 
Father, we come together in unity, as you have taught us children to say together in our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May the Lord welcome everyone here at Salem United Methodist Church. Please stand up and look to your friend to the right or left. Get up and roam around and wish each one of us peace be with you. Amen indeed. Peace be with you. Superhero. Who's this? Jesus. 
Jesus. Jesus. Yes, this is Jesus. Can he be our superhero? Yes. Yeah, look. This one even has a cape behind him. He's literally going, shh. Yeah. Well, what do you think makes Jesus so super? Yeah, you know what? Huh? Yeah, that's okay. Well, Jesus is pretty super because, you know, he, he comes into this world, he heals the sick, you know, he makes people feel good, he gives us good advice, doesn't he? he that's right. And he also created the gateway to heaven, he died for our sins. So he's pretty super God in my book. You know, I mean, because of him, that's why there's all these little white churches and other kinds of churches all around the world here today because of Jesus, our superhero. So isn't that pretty cool? Yeah. So I think so too. I'm going to take this home, and when I get home, I'm probably going to get lectured. But you never know. Super Jesus might come back, but hopefully, Super Jesus is with us in all our hearts. Amen. Amen. Cool. Will you join me in a prayer? Make a quick prayer, right? Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you are into our lives. You guide us in all our troubles, our concerns. You lift up our hearts when we need you the most. You are so super to us. You teach us to be disciples and to, to sometimes to fill in for your disciples at all times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you guys for coming up here today. So I hope it was a super moment, right? Yeah, and you got to remind Pastor Suzanne comes back next week and says, what do you got? Right? Yeah. Yeah, you got All right. Well, thank you for coming. <laughs> right now, we're going to hear a special scripture from Mary Jo. She's going to come up here and she's going to read for us. All right? That way I'll leave your Bible. You can have it back. <laughs> All right. Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of Luke. It's chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. And it's talking about when Jesus appeared to his disciples. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning it is at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The word of God for the people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I need my reading glasses because these are my superpower reading glasses. It helps me to be able to see the words. Will you please join me in an opening prayer? God of hope, we see your love pour out for all of us in our world. Make us more like you. Teach us to live together as one community, human and beyond human, creature and created to your glory. So your Love is known among all the living. Amen. I know I've talked about this before, and 
maybe you maybe I've done a sermon in here before about it, but I'm going to talk about it again, but in a different way. Did I ever tell you that I'm a Bigfoot fan? Yeah, I'm, that's right, Bigfoot. Yeah, that hairy beast known as Sasquatch. According to legends, he was first discovered in the upper northwest woods in the United States. Let's say northwest woods ten times fast. <laughs> I had become a Bigfoot fan because when I was a child of the 1970s, when I was like that little man's age, there was this TV show that some of you might recall. It was called The Six Million Dollar Man. Do y'all, some of you remember that? It was cool. Yeah, man. It has starred this actor, Lee Majors, who played Colonel Steve Austin. This astronaut was incredible and was rebuilt with mechanical super strength from a bad accident. You know, this TV show was a huge hit, especially for kids like me. And it was on the air for six years. And uh, so the reason why I tell you this on that TV show's there were several episodes where Steve Austin would have altercations. He would battle and fight with Bigfoot. As a child, this freaked me out. Couldn't get that image of Bigfoot out of my mind and uh, trying to fall asleep before going to bed on a school night. Yeah, I struggled with that. And by the way, not to go too far off, but did you know Bigfoot has a cousin? It's called a Yeti. He has a fur coat that's all white and lives in the Himalayan mountains in Asia. As far as I know, I guess they stay in touch. Now, now today, today, it's, you can turn on the channel. There are several reruns about Bigfoot on TV shows on the Discovery Channel, the History Channel, where these scientists, these researchers, and I tell you the truth, some of them act like buffoons who have been chasing and searching our brown hairy beast who is supposedly has been discovered in half of the United States, including West Virginia and Pennsylvania. They even got episodes on that. But the one thing for sure, Bigfoot doesn't live in Maryland, and it's, I guess because taxes are too high. <laughs> I even follow Bigfoot on Facebook, but I just, I want you to imagine, what would you do, yeah, just imagine, what would you do if Bigfoot showed up here unannounced? I mean, here we are in this church, imagine we're sitting in the pews, service begins, the prelude, the candles are lit, Diane is playing the organ, and here comes walking in this friendly beast. Bigfoot, how would you react? Would you be shocked? Right? We would be in disbelief. Now, as I said, I am fascinated by Bigfoot, but honestly, I would be scared to death. I could see me grabbing Diane as we'd be making a run for the side door, and meanwhile, I'm throwing beef jerky sticks at it, because evidently, according to the TV commercials, that's what he likes, right? Yeah, Kathy. Well, Kathy would be trying to sponsor him to go on the mass weekend. <laughs> As he's going, he'd be like, maybe sounding like that from Star Wars. <laughs> Any of you, or all of you, must be wondering, how in the world did Jeff ever use Bigfoot according to the Luke scripture that Mary Jo just read? In fact, one of my Emmaus buddies, Chip O'Rourke, who's also a big, big Bigfoot fan, gave me this t-shirt, and I'm going to show this to you. Ta-da! This t-shirt as a gift. And this is what happens when you give me a t-shirt like this. Because I might be inspired by the Holy Spirit to write a sermon on it, right? <laughs> so I want to apologize for all those who are watching online if you cannot see the image of Bigfoot on here. But for those who are not here, it says here, all I need is Jesus and Bigfoot. Yes, indeedy. Put, put my hairy friend right there. Now, seriously, taking a step back. Now, we all know and say it together every month as Pastor Suzanne prepares us for communion, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and together, Christ will come again. 
as it has been written in Revelations and other scriptures about Christ coming again. I want you, again, to imagine a person who walks in this church, possibly, likely, unrecognizable. And this person says, peace be with you. Surprise! How do we react? We would think or say, why, Jeff, I would be excited. Our hearts are beating fast. Tears flowing with joy. Our reactions could be exciting as watching a game show like The Price is Right, you know? You know, when the MC over the microphone, as he pulls back the curtain, he says, you could win a brand new car. Instead, this time, the MC goes, ladies and gentlemen, the curtains pull back and he comes through the door, it's Jesus Christ. And the crowd screams and everyone's standing with joy, clapping hands. People crying. Some folks are falling on the floors. One or two might have fainted. What's happening here? Perhaps my imagination to this story has become too much, but I wonder how people would today, right now, react. A surprise visit. Jesus Christ. When the disciples knew at first that they thought they were first that they thought they were seeing a ghost they were scared they were scared almost to death why would they be so frightened well for one thing they have never seen a ghost and they didn't know what to expect ghosts would not be subject to the rules that bind the rest of us who knows what a ghost might do maybe jesus ghost would be angry and he would be angry because he was crucified. Maybe he would blame the disciples for failing to rescue him. And maybe he had came back to pronounce judgment on the disciples as he was arrested. There must have been a thousand maybes in the disciples' mind as they saw Jesus standing in their midst. Maybe this, maybe that. The point is that they didn't know what to expect. Jesus' appearance has thrust them into a new world that they did not fully understand. And it's scary when that happens. When the old familiar rules no longer apply. When we don't know what rules do apply. It's the scariest thing to be thrust into an unfamiliar situation and not to have the foggiest idea what's going to happen next. That was the situation with Jesus' disciple that evening. Jesus' appearance in their midst thrust them into suddenly into a world that they did not understand, and they did not have the foggiest idea of what was going to happen next. Maybe the floor was about to open up and they would swallow them in whole. When you are suddenly faced with a ghost from watching too many horror movies, anything just might happen. But Jesus moves quickly to reassure them, and he says, why are you frightened, and why doubt arise in your hearts? This is from verse 38 and continues in 39. Look at my hands and feet. See that is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. You know, many times when we talk about this, everybody's like, oh, it's Thomas the doubter. Thomas, 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 Thomas. No, 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 no. All those disciples were confused. Amen? However, I have to admit, I really don't know what to do if I was in that same situation as the disciples. The disciples respond to Jesus with joy, disbelief, and wonderment. Jesus' sudden appearance overloads their ability to process what's happening. A lifetime experience tells them that death is the end, but Jesus' sudden presence that tells them otherwise we should not be surprised that they are befuddled. They just imagine how, just imagine how you would respond, which we've all been there, if you were to bury a loved one, only to find out that that person is standing in your midst again, fully alive. A few days later, <laughs> you'd, your head would be wondering, you'd be joy and disbelief. And you'd be like, yeah, I'm confused, Absolutely. 
touch me and see. You can't touch a ghost, can you? We don't really know because we've never seen a ghost. But we think of ghosts of having no bodies, no physical substance. If we were to try to touch a ghost, wouldn't our hands pass right through the ghost? <laughs> Who knows? Touch me and see. Jesus wanted to reassure the disciples that while he, his resurrection, had ushered in a whole new world, that the world was not designed to pull the rug out from under their feet. It was much like their familiar world. For one thing, there were no ghosts. It was much like, for one thing, there were no ghosts. Jesus was not a ghost. Jesus had a body. His disciples could actually touch him. They could see the nail prints in his hands, and they could see it in his feet. Jesus went on to reassure them. He says, you have anything to eat? When we handed him some fish, he ate it in their presence. Why did Jesus do that? Well, maybe he was hungry. But his main purpose was to reassure his disciples that he had a physical body. In a different light, but the same being. Right now, seriously, folks, he is among us. He is with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. If what I say was not true, then who is on the other side, on the other end, when the pastors are called to preach and to serve their congregation, called to serve their community? As I stand here before you, I would not be standing here right now in front of you if I did not answer the call, even today. And I talk about my favorite creature, Bigfoot. Many of you would not be serving important roles in this church, including singing in the choir, even taking out the garbage, if you didn't answer the call. None of those positions you have accepted to serve this church are not taken lightly. That is what it means to serve and be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. That's discipleship. Christ expects us not to become complacent and wait. No, we cannot assume that Christ's return is not going to happen. He's not going to appear in our lifetime. He can appear at any time. We must always, always be prepared. This is no joke because Jesus Christ is no ghost. Now the disciples are fully convinced from what they witnessed that they have their marching orders. They told the people what they have seen, that they had seen the risen Christ. We too might take that as our marching orders as well. We, can force any, we can't force anyone to believe in Jesus. We, can, we can't argue with them into becoming believers. But we can tell them, well, what we have seen, what the resurrected Christ has meant for us, and how the re resurrected Christ has helped us. We can tell them that the resurrected Christ also loves them. We do that. We will, and like those first disciples, proclaiming Christ's name to all nations. As of now, we have not seen the risen Christ with our own eyes, but we have experienced him in our lives. Our responsibility is to tell the story, to tell it, not as, as I turn the page, hearsay but as our knowledge, and to tell it wholeheartedly. There is no other plan, and why not? Well, I don't know about you, but from what I've seen, feel, and heard about our Lord and Savior, I can live with that. Amen. I lost my bulletin to recover it. One of the ways we can show how we believe in Jesus Christ and be part of the discipleship is to go out and help the people out there who need our help, helping our ministry, helping this church, helping so many ways in this world. 
Today I ask the ushers to come forward as we give back to what belongs to Christ. And um, so we're going to have a little scene. And uh, these are the Winget sisters. The Queens of Winget. Let's give it up. faithful stewards. Bless our giving and guide us in these gifts wisely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
please join us in our final hymn, Holy, 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 page 64 in your hymnal. Shining God, turn your face to us, your people, your community. You hear our cry. We repent of the lures that led us to drought, for they are worthless. We seek restoration of the cycles you ordain. We refresh ourselves in your righteousness. We rest assured, and we are assured in you, because Jesus, you are our superhero. Amen. Amen. Go in peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Enjoy this blessed day. And Pastor Suzanne, she'll come back next week. And that's super too.